answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be you. The world awaits to receive you. Uncensored Enlightenment Talk, and you're here with your host, Grace Levi. Let me put myself on the screen. Today, we're going to be doing a reaction video. Hey, 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 y'all. You're here with your host, Grace Levi, and today we're going to be doing a reaction video. So, I know how my camera's set up. I'm going to, you know, make myself small on the screen. And what we're going to be reacting to today is a few clips that was actually off of lawyer for workers okay as you see we just released a video that highlighted a few series of instagram posts from him so if you want to keep track of the case he is on it go to his instagram page he also has the subscriber only you can find out about that but right now what we're going to talk about is actually what he asks and the question he asks is why is the judge actually singing the lyrics, using the lyrics, and some other things? So let's address this tonight. We're going to play this together. We're going to play it, play it, play it. We'll add it. Judge you may think you and I want to make sure that you're able to hear it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. I hope you like some of the videos that I've been dropping. Shout out to all of, um, you know, the people who I've been drop a content about i have no bias against you i don't know you but what i will say is that anything that i said comes from love and compassion and truth at the end of the day an uncensored enlightenment talk our goal is to uplift the conversation in the black community and start to see it from another perspective because i i, I noticed that we have a lot of low vibrational nonsense that's going on and the perspective is picked up and continued to be spread just like a just like toxic toxicity. I, I, I might like that word, but just like a virus. Okay. And we need to understand that we one all need to have discernment based on the information that we see and definitely what it pertains to the black community and our brown melanated sons being arrested. Now, what I will say, me coming from Newark, New Jersey, and me having an inside ear about this case. And, you know, I don't know the individuals uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis that has these RICO charges, but I know of some of these individuals and people who know of them who are being charged. And a, a lot of these individuals are from Newark, New Jersey and connected to Atlanta as well. And this is one of the things that I was talking about coming from Newark and coming up to Atlanta. I'm like, oh, my goodness, the gangs followed us. So all, everything that I'm saying is this coming from a non-biased perspective, just looking at our community, looking at the way the judge is handling things. This is where it's coming from. But I do know what's going on in our Black community, and I am going to address it through the commentary. So let's get this reaction video started. I know a little bit about this case. But it would be a violation for you to discuss this case amongst yourselves while you're sitting here, while you're going to the bathroom, when you get released to go to your vehicles, in small groups, when you come home, when you're coming in, when you're going up the elevator. It would be a violation for you to discuss this matter until such time as I authorize you to do that. Now, you're probably saying, he'll never know. Bump him. Oh, I find out because people tend to snitch on one another. And then, I didn't, I didn't ask you all for your comments. Ms. Fagan, hmm. if you're unprofessional. But people tell on one another. The judge knew. So he, the lawyer, he's going to go into what the judge did and what happened. And then I'm going to give my commentary behind it. He messed up and he responds by lashing out at the people who are responding to him 
messing up. As a judge, you're supposed to be impartial. You're not supposed to be signaling to the jury in any way, shape, or form how you come out on the ultimate question, which is the guilt of the defendants. In your first couple of statements to these jurors, if you use the word snitch and then you start saying things like, hey, you know, people tend to snitch, it happens, it always comes out, what are you suggesting? You're suggesting that in a case where cooperators are present, that that's an indication of it should not happen. You should not use that word. He knows he's not supposed to use that word. I hope that the defense is actively, I can't believe they did that. I really hope the defense is actively employing attorneys who are constitutional lawyers, people who look at due Thank process, you. people who consider issues like how do you present a trial with this many witnesses to a jury? How do you present a trial where this much information has been leaked out to the media by the prosecutors on purpose? How do you present a trial when so much of the evidence is extracted under the threat of infinite detention, under indefinite detention. How do you go forward with the trial when in just the first couple of statements to jurors, the judges out here talking about, hey, people always snitch. I hope that there are constitutional lawyers and scholars being employed by the defense looking at these issues. We'll follow on along with the rest of the YSL trial. Snitching, just just go ahead, throw that word. Does that All right. So I'm just going to stop right there before we move on to the next part, because he has a question that he want to ask and I want to answer that. So from my perspective, just researching law i'm not a lawyer but i am a legal nursing consultant i love to research law if y'all got to know me i got other platforms and i just i'm a geek for this stuff but what um what i got from the actual judge saying that one the problem is that that's not a common word that's used in court snitching so they know within this whole court proceedings they're using hip hop lingo, lyrics and things like that. So they're gonna be having to define these words. So because that's not a common word that the judge will use and they know that that's gonna be a term that needs to be defined within the court proceedings, this is why the defense is like, wait, you're wrong. And then the judge had the nerve to be arrogant and say, hey, you're talking out of term. And this is, this is my stance. When it comes to court, I've been in court. I mean, as far as myself, representing myself, watching court cases. And what I see is is literally when people are not in the court and even when we're it, we are in the court, you have the judge and a prosecutor acting like they're friends. Everyone is just like was at the cookout last week. And that is not how it's supposed to be. I know people think like, hey, well, the prosecutor worked for the judge. Actually, the prosecutor works for the state. Actually, they work for the county. They work for the city, whoever that solicitor is. The judge is supposed to be non-partial, non-biased. So when you have a judge saying, hey, that's my prosecutor, that's not your prosecutor. Now you can put yourself in a term of possessing and having a direct relationship with this counsel, which is a conflict of interest. And I also highlight that these individuals, which is the judge and the counsel, they all come from the same bar association. So they know each other, they're friends, they share favors amongst each other. Um, if you have a higher ranking, meaning that, you know, you had a lot of cases come in here, you know, you did a lot of favors for people, your case may be heard before other lawyers, you may be able to work out deals better with the judge. And this is how the um, back workings of the court work. You may not like it. You may like say, no, this is America. We have justice. We're going to go a little bit into the Tory Lane's verdict because you see that I made a video talking about, you know, how I felt like it was going to be a mistrial because I still have a perspective of what justice is supposed to be. But from what really goes on, we know that it's not going to happen. Whatever the court wants to obscure, high, um, hold um, evidence, it will not be submitted. Uh, judges become very hostile with parties that they don't like. We see this in many cases. I mean, even cases where you have um, child custody cases and you have a judge that may not like the mother or may not like the father. And then you have a father or the other parent that is doing actual abuse. And the judge like, no, he's going to go live with it. I, we're going to talk about a story like that, where that happened. And it happens plenty of times. And it just shows that some of our judges are not acting in the capacity of being non-biased and having the best interest of mind of the whole state actually following along with constitutional law, as he says, 
The reason why some people get off on cases, because when they actually go to appeal it, they're going to appeal at a higher level to do constitu constitutional challenges. They're not going to just, um, they're not going to be able to add more um, things to the case. If they're going to take it to a higher court, everything that was submitted evidence is the evidence that's going to be submitted to the court, the higher court. The higher court goal is to determine if it's any other uh, procedure issues or constitutional issues that can be challenged with the actual proceedings. Okay. And that's where you take it to the higher court. Okay. So with that goes to stay, especially if you lose trial. Now, if they, if you win, they could come and retry you again. They ain't taking you to higher court. They're taking you back to the same court. So guys, we got to understand how the, the process work, kind of what it really supposed to be. We got a lot of commentary out there. A lot of us brown melanated people like, no, that's just the way it is. And da, 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 da. now what I will say is that the actions that they're trying these people for, in my opinion, I'm not going to say they didn't do it. We know that hip hop is toxic. We know that it is doing something to the black community as far as mentality, as far as um, stunning our kids growth by making them just focus on this particular industry. And all our kids think they're going to be rappers and stars. We literally may not even have people who are going to be engineers, doctors, and things like that. These are things that we need to pay attention to. So there is an influence that's pretty toxic on the Black community. But hip hop started out in the heart. Okay. All right. I ain't such a shrewd. I'm born in Brooklyn. My dad used to be a DJ, still is my, uh, you know, he loved it. So I grew up under music. Me and him used to have the Run DMC, you know, Adidas outfits on matching back in the day when I was a little girl. So I understand hip hop. I understand music. I love to play it. You're going to see me playing some music. We're going to start a little music thing going on here. I'm not going to uh, blow it up real quick, but we're going to see. We're going to be sharing uh, content creators that you have never heard of, good music, things like that. So I, I just want you to understand that I'm not here trying to badger these people these young black men but i will say coming from newark i know what they did i know what the, how they destroyed and it wasn't just young gunner and his um people coming over or whatever this has been going on but um he introduced more of the demon time continue but i think what lured him to newark as well is because we had that drill music because drill music really really started out in the heart of newark and urbanized areas such as that and that drill music, I will say, is, oh, so many notifications, I do apologize. That drill music, I will say, is is esteemed is by the devil. I mean, you seeing the waving of guns in the air and the screen like this, and it is heart-wrenching. Like, I just knew I had to get out of Newark. It was just done. Done, 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 done. You know, just killing people who were totally innocent um and then i'm going to go into what he's talking about and after this but before i do that i'm going to tell y'all about the perspective of the judge and what he was doing now if y'all know anything about the 48 laws of power he used some of those tactics to kind of get the jury in the court in the mindset of what he wants okay but what i can say is with the killing in north it's totally out of hand i mean literally it, it's this gentleman, God rest his soul, named Oogie. And from the name Oogie, y'all got to know that Oogie was a lower functional person, but he could function. You know, he was just a sweetheart. And, you know, about two years ago, found out that they murdered him. And it was like, no reason why this boy doesn't fight nobody. He literally go to cookouts and dance and do his, you know, thing. He literally, you can see that he is more than low, low, low functional. No one will feel a threat. That's how bad certain urbanized areas have gotten. Okay. So we got to understand the depths of this. And this is what they're going to use as a catalyst to take down hip hop. So we're going to go back, go more into this is like to figure out like, why are they using these hip hop lyrics in their cases? And half of them don't even understand the lyrics. So 
before we go into that, I want to go into some of the concepts that I pulled because I had to remember because I have read the book, The 48 Laws of Power. And I'm going to be honest, when I read the book, I was like, oh, this is the devil. I, oh, oh, I just, but I love to read. So I had to see, you always got to know what the enemy doing. You always got to know how to trick it really go. But the judge basically used law three, concealing your intentions. Because just by him just coming out saying, hey, snitching is this. Don't go on the elevator. Somebody going to snitch on you if you go talk it. He's using, like he concealed his intentions by directing that conversation in that manner. He could have said it the same way he usually say it. That you cannot talk about the case anywhere outside of this court. Or you will be taken off the jury thing. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so he used concealing your intentions. He went on to power number three, using selective honesty to disarm your victim. And the reason why I say selective honestly, because he honestly knows that he doesn't supposed to use those terms. You know, even when I was on the nursing floor, they say like, like, I'm like, nah, I ain't with this. I ain't beat. And they'll look at me like, what? Like, they'll look at it like, oh, she's being ghetto. Oh, that's unprofessional. Because there's a certain words you just use that you, certain places that you don't use. And you got to understand, especially when you're in a position such as that, that's just not how you conduct yourself. So we definitely know that he was using selective honesty because he honestly know that's not a term that he usually uses. snitching. Please. And if he does, he don't do it at work. 31, um, controlling the opposition by getting the others to play the cards that you dealt. So he dealt that card already. It's already there. It's already in the jurors' mind, snitching, snitching. They're going to hear this so much. And if we have a trial with 300 witnesses, and I'm going to address that because per, first and foremost, I ain't going to be 300 witnesses. Just like what you're going to see me address, there's another lawyer called Bruce Rivers who address the ball um boston richie i'm going to boston richie because they're calling him a snitch too this snitch shit ain't no joke you can't be calling people snitches and thinking that it's just okay and it's just social media rant it is dangerous so we're going to go into boss richie probably sometime this week um uh, release another uh reaction video to you about that because at the end of the day our black community needs to just stop taking things and just running with it we have to read. We have to read. We have to research. We cannot just listen to someone who has an Instagram or YouTube page and say, this is what it is. Information, take the best out of it, leave the worst, and then go add that to another piece of information. It's not, you know, everything is golden, you know. So this is why we have our commentary and add more commentary onto it. So you can have a collective perspective and make your own judgment. That That's the most important thing that I can always stress and suggest to my black community. Have your own opinion. If I, I mean, have your own opinion so much that you just go opposition to somebody. Like, no, 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 no. Just try it. Just try it. Because we have to stop following idolism all right so the next uh law of power that the judge used was disarming and infiltrating with minor effects of communication you get it so i I'm, i went over a little bit i wanted to just talk about the 48 powers of law i call i keep calling it 48 powers of law because that's how i have remembered it but it's the 48 laws of power and people read that like yeah that's good that was a good book that shit is demonic. And I would say read it with discernment. And if you apply these laws of the 48 power, just know that some of them are not under the best realms of God. Just know that it's not as against people. But you should understand them because we have a lot of manipulators. And I think we have a lot of content creators on these YouTube streets who read that book. And they apply that power all the time to y'all. So we got to got to break the chains, baby. Okay. So let me go back into what um lawyers for work lawyer for workers were saying. And he had one more question. And we're going to address that question. 
Anybody know why the judge was reading the lyric out loud, F the judge? It gives a weird appearance. I don't know what the context was. If you can stitch or duet this video and explain to me the context of why the judge is in open court out loud reading the lyric, F the judge, because it just seems, I need to understand the context. Well, it just seems freaking weird and ridiculous. At the end of the day, this is opening statements and you, the judge, shouldn't even be making long off opening statements like this. That's first and foremost. If anybody know court proceedings, you'll be like, what is going on here? Because it's the prosecutor against the defense. They're going to have their opening statements. The judge will set the rules down like he was supposed to and this, that, and the third. That is all. That is all he's supposed to do. And he's supposed to be the referee. If they come out of terms and they open the statement, somebody object, he say overrule, he say sustain, that is the judge's position. That's why this lawyer said that is so crazy and it's out of pocket because it looks like they're, 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 they're acting as in like it's a kangaroo court. Only certain people understand what that is, but go look up the word kangaroo court. Literally not following the right proceedings, doing what you want to do and applying anything. Um, I, I forgot the Black Panther's name, but it was a Black Panther who was being charged with something and because he kept talking, they literally taped his mouth. Okay. We're going to find that. We're going to do a video about that for you guys, just to bring that back up, you know, and that was beyond unconstitutional, unhumane, and literally a kangaroo court. You don't have rights to do that. What the judge had right to do is to held the person in contempt and take them out of court and they can move forward with the proceedings, even though that's not copacetic, but you can't do that. So that's considered kangaroo court beyond any gross measures. I just had to bring that story up because that's how they do us. This is how they do us in court. And I remind you at the beginning of the commentary, I don't want y'all to think that I'm just like for the hood, for the gang, for the violence. It's not that. But it's the fact that people rely on this court system and believe in the court system. They believe in it. And I, I ain't going to say we because I don't. They believe in the court system. and it severely obscured the judgment of people and the way things are supposed to go. When you literally see the case of Tory Lanez, when we go back into it, some of the things, it was so obscured. The whole idea of having a court case and the end result is supposed to be equivalent to no reasonable doubt, point blank period. No one's supposed to have any doubt that you did this. If it's a doubt, you have to hold the person not guilty. That's supposed to be in the judge's actually opening statements. That's what the judge supposed to say. Not if somebody snitching and knowing that these people out there here snitching for the next six months and it's going to be drilled down their throat. And one of the questions that he mentioned in the video that we released at 7 p.m. was how is people going to sit there for all of this time, commit at least six months or so to a case, don't go to work, and this is why it's hard for people to do jury duty because first they don't pay. So the judge and all of these people get all these hundreds of thousands of dollars circulating money in the background. We ain't going to talk about that. And then you got these jurors here talking about, we got to come out there and try these cases and listen to these things. And you make a 50 cent an hour. So, you know, these people ain't going to be able, they're not going to do it. And if they do do it, they're going to rush to make such a decision at the end. Cause they're going to want to be gone. I have had that done to me where I had a case where I knew I was supposed to win. The judge, when I was found guilty for this damn running the stop sign ticket, because I, yes, I fight everything. He, when he was like guilty, he was like, he looked at me. I looked at him. I was like, oh, shit, I'm guilty by my peers. And it took two prosecutors to literally stand their case against me. And the judge was surprised, but the judge knew he could have reversed it, but he didn't because he wanted to prove, have a good record or whatever, and give me the hell up out of his court case. Okay. His court. That man told me, you shouldn't be a nurse. You should be a lawyer. I said, don't worry. I'm coming. But what that goes to say, it be our peers, it be our the peer, our, our peers, the people in our community that doesn't judge right. They don't, don't judge based on the actual rules that they were given by this court. 
they they judge based on emotions and that is not copacetic that is not good or who they like it has to if y'all gonna have this court set up right do it right stop having these back doors for tom dick and and and, and bob to get out of but it ain't no back door for tremaine benjamin and trevon and that's what i'm saying the biasness in the court is what I dislike. That is my damn problem. I know that these young men flooded the streets with drugs. I ain't say it allegedly. I'm going to say allegedly. But at the end of the day, being in Newark, we're going to try to get an interview from an inmate. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get an interview from an inmate from Newark. And I'm going to let y'all know when you get the word from the jail, that's the true word so hopefully i can get an interview from the inmate that want to talk about this and we're going to share some more so you can get some inside look from the actual hood a newark so i i want y'all to understand i understand what's going on but we have to have a just system okay so why the judge is reading lyrics one because he want to indict hip-hop Hip hop is under indictment. Everybody. Secondly, he see the toxicity and he want to be the black superhero. I'm going to take him down and I'm going to wrap these lap lyrics because I understand them. That is unnecessary. Okay. That is something that was not supposed to be done. The second thing we're going to go into is this last part. Why he shouldn't be reading the damn lyrics? Because they don't know what the hell they're doing. I mean, hip hop is convoluted when it comes to terminology. People have their own lingo coming from different dialects. So I want to see these people who talk legalese break this shit down because this is going to be funny as hell to me. I'm sorry because I understand how these people talk in legalese. You regular talk and hip hop talk, hood talk, baby. They ass is going to be confused. So come on, let's keep this going. Welcome to another episode of When Using Rap Lyrics in Court Goes Horribly Wrong. As always, this is an official transcript from United States Court Proceeding. We're going to dig in and you're going to love it. Watch this. So you have Miss Coker, that's the government. You have the court, which is the judge. And then you have the witness, which is the government agent who did the investigation. And the government, Miss Coker at the top, no further questions, Your Honor. And the court jumps in. I got a follow-up question about the Biggie Smalls lyric. And Miss Coker, huh? What? <laughs> this is where it gets good. So right on top of my head, you see here, the court says, hey, look, you know, in the government's exhibit, it says I've got seven Mac 11s, about eight thirty eights, nine nines. And here's Miss Coker, the government saying, what is that? It's a what? I don't understand what that is. And the court says it's a Biggie Smalls lyric. I read it in your evidence. I know Biggie Smalls lyrics. This thing about nine nines, eight eights. That's Biggie Smalls. He, she, the judge explains that to the government. And now she asks the witness, hey, Investigator, this is your evidence. Are you looking for the seven Mac 11s, 838s, and 99? Nine? And the money shot right on top of my head from the witness. I don't recognize the lyrics, is what I'm saying. No, you don't recognize the lyrics. You don't recognize that in your evidence is not a defendant telling you that he's going to buy ammo, including seven Mac 11s, 838s, and 99s. He is quoting verbatim from one of the most recognizable rap lyrics of all time from one of, if not the most famous rapper of all time. And you, sir, using rap lyrics as part of your investigation, don't know the lyrics. You, you don't know that they're lyrics. Shame on you. Stay tuned. Until next time. That is ridiculous. And okay, so let's talk about this from a deeper perspective. Now, when you have court case, they use certain things within older court cases to create precedents for newer court cases. Now, if they're able to use these lyrics and these lyrics to be so abstract like that, where he's not saying, I'm going to go get this, or he's actually quoting someone else toxic lyrics, and they're going to use that against him. How do you think that that can be used in other cases where people are quoting other people? Okay? Let's think about that. Let's just think about that. Because when you use court cases as president, 
to represent yourself in another case. You don't use the whole court proceeding. You take different phrases or certain phrases that apply to what's going on in you and try to make the best sense of it and explain it to why that case is related to here and why you could, you know, use it as some type of evidence to stand for what you're trying to say. Does that make sense? So for them to use these lyrics is terrible. It's such a tremendously low bar that it's going to be able to indict anyone and everyone in hip hop, outside of hip hop, around hip hop, and that's walking the damn streets. Quote your mama wrong and let it be something that they can say they're going to use in court because that's what you meant because you repeated it. Because that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Just by quoting that Pacific Biggie verse. Now, the judge called it out. Because he's like, that's a Biggie verse. That ain't his. He told you the judge no hip-hop. He must be a hip-hop fan. He's biased. He has to get out. Because this is, if you start rapping at the beginning, this is talking about something. I'm, I'm the rapping judge. You could tell he no hip-hop. So he, he's like, nah, that's Biggie. And they like, huh? Oh. So he's like, are you going to be showing us Eight Mac 11s and da 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 whatever. I don't know the words, but you know, I, I like the tone. I like the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with that goes to say, you're going to present that as evidence, but how does that connect to evidence? That's not evidence. That's just words. That's just phrases. So a person can say something, but then you need to show that as proof. And that's why they ask the witness. Do you know anything about this? And he, he like, I don't know nothing about that. No nine nines, 11 Mac 10s. I ain't see all of that. The case is starting off ridiculous. That, that's what I'm going to say. The case is starting off crazy and ridiculous. And at the end of the day, we're going to have a situation where I believe that they're going to, let me move this off the stream. They're going to take this case and they're going to start indicting more black men, more hip hop artists, women, men, all you, even Cardi B. You got cases out there, woman, and they're going to use your lyrics, your lyrics against you, baby. Let this case go through. Mark my words. This will be presidents for them to do that so i wanted to talk about that i at least wanted to give you some commentary behind the release that we did you're going to most likely see us on saturdays and tuesdays or mondays we're going to try to keep it consistent but we definitely want to continue to have our sabbath up uploads i hope y'all like the upload on monday because we're going to keep teaching the nations who want to know who they are who are connected to more than just the transatlantic hate slave ship, I mean, slave trade. Y'all know about that. But we teach you a little bit more here. We go a little bit further. It's not just the Bible. We don't just Bible push. We ain't religious here. But we use documented history, other facts, as well as now we are able, because I learned it now, because I, I always know about the E1B1, but the genetic proof. So shout out to Ron Dalton. I know I got sidetracked. I just always got to give shout out and also to shout out to our actual sponsors. So thank you for watching us today and stay tuned just to see our sponsors who are definitely helping the black community, teaching you how to invest in tax liens and tax deeds no mortgage needed, no interest uh, interest rate on big loans, or you don't need credit checks. So let them show you the method of how to invest in tax liens and tax deeds. Also, our second sponsor is Lashlays.com. So if you're into health and wealth, you want to get working out, we got water bottles, workout equipment, shapewear for men and women. Men need shapewear too, baby. We got you. So get on the boat. I want to say thank you for being with me today. Grace Levi, we got a lot of information to share with you. Pray to God that we don't get another strike, baby. I'm going to be good on this because they just took uh, the Black Discovery Channel down. Shout out to Black Discovery Channel. YouTube took it down. It was up for five years. 
But at the end of the day, guess what, YouTube? You can't take my our scenario away. So I have all the videos, everything teaching about Moses and all this stuff. You, you thought you was going to throw that in the garbage? You thought I wasn't going to keep it, huh? Anyway, word for my sponsor. I love you guys. And thank you so much for being with Grace Levi and giving me a chance to be part of your uh, gossip world and enlightenment. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to just gossip here. We're going to enlighten. We're going to take this conversation to another level, baby. Gotta go. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step, -step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.